Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, uh, World's Greatest Redneck, and today we're going to work on making a clamp type knurling tool. Uh, some years back I made a clamp type that was uh, a plan I got from Tom's Techniques website, and it was great, a little bit limited in size, but it works wonderfully well. But I want to go up to maybe two or inches or more. And so I'm going to make a different kind of clamp type knurling tool than the one I made before. And before we get started, there's something to know about knurls. There's DP knurls and there's TPI knurls. Differential uh, knurls are, are designed to work with a DP of 64, I think, and 90, 120, and 160. Something like that. I got it written down here. Let me see. They're in 64, 96, 128, and 160 diametral pitch. Okay? And they discourage the use of the 64 diametral pitch because it's hard to work with. Uh, and the reason these diametral pitch rollers are made is so that they'll work. Oh man, I think the phone. They keep, they made that a way to work with. Uh, standard sizes of the standard incremental sizes of, of round stock up to one inch they work on the increments of 164th 196 128th and 160th of an inch you don't have to do any calculating or anything you just get your stock of that size and it knurls all right then you've got the tpi which is teeth per inch knurls and with them you have to count the teeth and do a little math to figure out exactly what diameter that the wheels are going to fit correctly. Okay? So, for that kind of information, you should go to AccuTrack. They've got it all written down, or you can go to a Machinery's Handbook. But I think uh, AccuTrack website where they sell the knurling wheels explain, explains it perfectly good. Alright? And today I have some TPI knurls, 30 uh, teeth per inch and uh, they're a quarter inch wide and five eighths diameter and they've got a quarter inch hole in the middle for the axle that's what we got to work with I'll show them to you knurling rollers are uh, figured as coarse medium or fine with coarse being 14 TPI which is teeth per inch medium being 21 teeth per inch and 33 being fine so what I have here is a couple of uh, 30 TPI rotors, 30 teeth per inch, and so this is sort of fine. This will make a, 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 a smoother knurl. You can see it's a nice looking little knurler. They come in right and left because if you're using a, a more like a diamond pattern, you have to have one right and one left to make the pattern. And that's what I've got here. I got a right and I got a left. Left hand, right hand. Alright. So I'm going to cut out a T-shaped piece of metal to be the main support for all this. I've got this piece of metal here to make the fingers out of. And I'll find a spring and some all thread around here for some of the other stuff. We'll make us a brass nut. There'll be a lot of work, but I'm going to spread this out over several short videos. Alright, so let's get on with it. Okay, you saw me cut this T-shape out on the bandsaw. Right now it's currently a half inch thick, and it's uh, hot rolled. So the outside's kind of rough, and I want it 3 8 inch thick, really, so that I can make uh, a slot in the other finger part over there, and this should support it quite well all right so that's what we're going to do now we're going to smooth off this side and then we'll flip the little booger over and bring it to size on the other side all right i raised the table up under that little booger until i saw it start cutting moved it in the back there where hopefully i can just cut the wide part of the teeth and leave the back piece as thick as it already is it's going to be a half inch square i hope when i get finished so we'll just lubricate this a little bit and then we'll 
go face it off. made a fairly good cut. I'm going to see how thick it is and then I'll take a little bit more off. I'm going to try to take the same amount off of both sides so, so that this is setting out in the middle of a half inch piece sticking out of it. All right let me go find my micrometer and we'll get on with it. It's still smooth enough. Uh, so, I suppose my next move should be to uh, measure it again to make sure I'm in the right neighborhood and then uh, take the rest of it off there. I'll let you guys sleep through the rest of that part. So I've used one of my older stops on there to see to it that I get it pushed right back to where it's at there. So that means the distance between the low spot and the high spot on the other side will be identical to this one, I hope. That's the idea anyway. Well, something went wrong with my redneck mask and I overshot the thickness of my dot. Oh, I guess 40,000, 35,000. So it's centered in three eighths, but it's a little, <laughs> a little thicker than five sixteenths. So we'll just make everything to fit that size. I'm going to flatten off the little tail piece on the T. Just, we'll just got all that crud from being uh, hot rolled. Not really going to try to reduce it much of anything. That feels fairly good, so what I'll do now is I'll take the thing out and I'll rotate it up on its edge so that we can cut the uh, right thickness on the other two sides of this thing. I think that's the best way to do it, but who knows, I could be wrong, I was once before.
I think that will probably do it and I'll flip it over and we'll do the rest of it. Alright, we've got the uh, T-shaped part which could I guess be correctly called the main frame of the thing. We've got it cut to the thickness and shape and square and so now we need to put a couple of holes in it to, to hold the, the little arms that are going to, you know, swing back and forth. Scissors type. Not scissors, but uh, close. All right. So anyway, we're going to uh, drill these holes out, and then this piece will be complete. drill. Now I need to ream the little buggers. I'm going to make them 5 sixteenths. I'm reasonably sure I've got a 5 sixteenths reamer. I'm not going to use a regular bolt. I'm going to make my own bolt for the thing or pin or whatever you want to call it. That'll be my job. Alright, the holes are reamed and chamfered. This piece is ready to set aside. And uh, that's it. Oh, and uh, thinking about it, we're going to have the ARW discussion this coming Sunday, the 30th. And I believe if things turn out like they're supposed to, Mr. Keith Rucker will be one of our guests. And Ms. Quinn Dunkey, who has been there before, will make a return visit. So you guys show up for the ARW discussion live stream Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time.